So in this video, I will show you an example of a sensitivity analysis using the method developed by Jeff Herring, Daniel McNish, and Greg Hancock from University of Maryland. Um, this is the phantom variable approach um, that's described in this paper published in 2017 in Psychological Methods. So for the example, I will do a small sensitivity analysis of the paper predicting continued use of online teacher professional development and the influence of social presence and social sociability, published by Smith and Sivo in 2012. So in this paper, they are expanding this uh, technology adoption model specifically for uh, the adoption of online professional development by teachers. In their expansion, they include two variables, uh, social presence and sociability. And also look at the, the direct effect of social presence on gains. Um, these are the research questions. Um, I will specifically focus the, these example sensitivity analysis on the third research question. To what extent does SP affect knowledge gains in an online professional development program? In their article results, they did not find a significant relationship between social presence and gains. So in their results, You have here um, coefficient point zero three. It's not statistically significant. Um, so the, the the sensitivity analysis we ask like how strong would uh, confounder that is related to gains and social presence have to be to change this relationship from not statistically significant too significant, okay? So the first step is to, to fit this model um, using the covariance matrix that the authors provided. So this is a, a path analysis model. The authors provide a correlation matrix here and also some deviation. So with that, um, I recreated the covariance matrix. Um, and here um, I'll show you in EMA plus. Okay, so this is the replication of their results. The, the, um, I'm using a full covariance matrix, sample size 517. Uh, this is the path analysis model. And I'll run this. And you know, the, the model has very close chi squared and model fit is not exactly the same as the one reported by the authors. It's probably differences in software. They use LISREL to do this analysis. Um, okay, now the particular coefficient we're doing sensitivity analysis for it is one here gains on SP. So the, the effect of SP on gains, the, the unstandardized coefficient is 0 0.036, p-value 0.95, okay? Let's, so, so let's see how large a confounder have to be related to gains on SP for, for this p-value here to turn significant. So in the standardized model results, we have the coefficient 0 0.03, which is the same as reported by the authors. Okay, now um, when you manipulate coefficients of a phantom variable in, um, in a sensitivity analysis, the coefficients are manipulated in unstandardized format. So like it's unstandardized values. Therefore, because the, the authors reported standardized values, I need to and it's easier to specify, to think of standardized values. Um, I would need to convert standardized values to 
unstandardized value, so I would need the variance of the two variables that are related here, which is gains and SP. Okay, so here at the beginning, I have um, the covariance matrix and the variance of gains is 77.44 and the variance of SP is 52.562. Okay, so keep those numbers in mind. Now, um, in my first step on the sensitivity analysis, um, I will manipulate, um, well, I will show you the file. So I'm going to manipulate the, the um, coefficient of the fatal variable. Um, and we'll, I will start with uh, a coefficient of 0.25 sun deviations. Let me go back to the original file to, to show you a justification for that, okay? So if you look at the standardized results of the original analysis, you know, you can see that, you know, the standardized coefficients here go between in the, the path coefficients, the direct effects. The smallest one is 0 0.03. The largest one is 0 0.68. 0 0.68 actually is an effect of SOC uh, sociability on social presence SP. You know, so it's it, by looking at this coefficient, you can think it is plausible to have a confounder that is related to social present presence as at point. 268 standard deviations, right? So in other words, if I simulate this confounder, if I define this confounder using phantom variable with a correlation up, uh, standardized path coefficient up to 0.68, I'm not making something that's implausible, you know, because you can see the 0.68 occurs in the original model, okay? Uh, but I'm not going to start with something as large as 0.68. I decided to start at 0.25. So meaning a confounder that is related to, um, that is related at a quarter standard deviation. Now, um, thinking about this sign of the confounder is also important. Like, so I, I need a confounder that's related to both gains and SP um, that provides like a backdoor path for the effect. And the, because this was not significant, like if you, if you had a confounder that um, has a positive relationship with gains, but a negative relationship with SP, you know, it will it would provide a, a negative. Um, it would provide an, a negative spurious correlation that could cancel any positive re relationship here. In other words, you know, let's say that is there really exists a positive relationship between SP in gains, but in our analysis, that positive relationship would not, was, uh, was not observed, right? Because this is almost zero. What type of confounder would cancel this relationship through a backdoor path? It would be a confounder that has a negative relationship. And I could, I could do this negative relationship in two ways. I could uh, do a confounder that has a negative relationship with SP, but positive relationship of gains, or I could flip that. I could do a confounder with negative relationship with gains, but positive relationship with SP. Now, it would be the task of the, the researcher that wrote this paper, like the original researchers, to think about what type of confounders make more sense. Um, I'm no expert in this area, uh, but because it's about online teaching, you know, I can speculate a little. Um, and here, a confounder, for example, uh, the, the amount of homework 
that the, the, the this uh, instructor uh, gives uh, that that these courses are the person is exposed to um, the homework could have a negative effect of social presence uh, because if you're doing homework uh, you know you're not online there is no social presence on the instructor uh, so the more homework there could be a negative relationship with social presence but a positive relationship with gains because the more homework you do the the bigger the gains right so assignment of the number of homeworks could be such a confounder that is negative related to social presence, uh, but positive related to gain. So that's what I will start with. Um, so going back to the specification of the sensitivity analysis, I will create that confounder that's negative related with social presence, but positive related with gains at a quarter certain deviation for both relationships. So, um, I named the file gamma 0.025025 minus 025 to remind me what I decided here. Um, and then, so it's a sensitivity analysis for research question three. Um, here I have the original model. Okay. Then I have the phantom variable, phantom by, showing that the phantom variable does not have any indicators. And phantom at one is the variance of the phantom variable. Now, if I was using raw data, I would also have to declare the mean of the phantom variable at zero. Uh, so it'd be like, I use br square brackets put, to put phantom at zero. But here, because I'm analyzing the covariance matrix, there, is no, there are no means, so I don't need to mention means, okay? So my target is a sensitivity part, standardized coefficient of 0.25. But remember, the specification is in terms of unstandardized sensitivity, uh, unstandardized sensitivity parameters. So I convert 0.25 into what it would be the unstandardized version of it. Okay. To do that, I need a standard deviation of gains, which is 8.8. .8. I just took the variance and took the square root. And the standard deviation of SP, which is 7.25. I again I went to the original analysis, look at what the variance was, and I took the, the square root. Um, now the how do you convert from standardized to unstandardized? Well, going back to showing you in the M plus manual, page 805, M plus 8, uh, the standardized coefficient equals to the unstandardized coefficient times the standard deviation of x divided by the standard deviation of y. Therefore, the unstandardized coefficient will be the standardized coefficient times the, the variance of y, uh, the standard deviation of y, divided by the standard deviation of x. Now, x here is the phantom variable, so the standard deviation of the phantom variable is 1. Therefore, all I need to do to get the unstandardized coefficient is to multiply the, the standardized coefficient by the standard deviation of y, okay? And that's what I do. Here I show you. So I calculate gamma, which is 0 0.25 times the standard deviation of y. So 0 0.25 times 8.8 .8 is 2.2. So I set that sensitivity parameter gains on phantom at 2.2. And then 0 0.25 times 7.25 is 1.8125. But I want to make this a negative relationship. So I do SP on phantom at minus 1.8125. Okay. And I will run this okay first thing to note that this model fit is not affected at all by that confounder um which is in this case is expected because that part of the model is just identified um but let's look at the the coefficients here i have the standardized coefficients as i specified sp on phantom was 
minus 1.812, you know, it was fixed to that value, and then gains on Fanta is 2.2. Now, what I will, I'm most interested in is did that confounder change the p-value for the effect of SP on gains, which is this here. It did. So now, instead of being 0.036, or, uh, well, I get 0.112 unstandardized, but it is statistically significant. So adding this confounder changed the conclusion of the researcher with respect to research question three. Okay, now let's look at the standardized values to see if I succeeded on, on these manipulations here for this being 0.25 standard deviations. So going to standardized, and it shows that I did calculate it correctly. So the standardized values of the phantom variable were minus 0.25 and 0.25 resulting in, uh, and this confounder resulted in a um, coefficient of 0 0.093, which is now statistically significant, okay? So I know that a quarter of standard deviation uh, would result in a change of conclusion. Now I could, I should, um, I'm not gonna do in this video because um, I think this is, I need to know to proceed, but a follow-up here would be to try this model with a smaller coefficient. So I would try, for example, would 0 0.1 star deviations, would that change the p-value? Would 0 0.05 star deviations change the p-value? Like try a few different values to have a better understanding at what point would the, would, this you know switch between um, not significant to significant, okay? Um, so at, at this point, just with this result here, I know that it's moderately sensitive. So a quarter standard deviation is a strong effect, right? So I sh you know I know that this effect will cause a switch. I should try smaller values to see would is it very sensitive? Like if I try let's say 0 0.05 standard deviation. And I now obtain a switch in p-value from not, not significant to significant, then I'll conclude it's very sensitive, you know. But um, so you have to have try different values to have an idea of how sensitive it would be. Okay, so that's how you would do a sensitivity analysis with phantom variables. And also very important to make an argument of how realistic the phantom variable is. So in my case here, I made the argument that homework, the number of homework assignments given by the teacher could be such a phantom variable. So you have to make an argument that that this is realistic, uh, understandable for someone that's expert in that particular field.